Hello and welcome back to episode two in the Winter Wildlife Photography course with me, Tom Mason and Wex Photo Video. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about the equipment that I use for wildlife photography, some of the stuff that I find absolutely essential when I'm out shooting, and as well as some of the accessories that are really handy when you work out in the field regularly. You know, I'm gonna talk through the cameras and gear that I use, and also give you some kind of recommendations on what's really the essential features you might be looking for if you're purchasing or, you know, upgrading in the future. So, right, let's get started with probably the most important thing that I use all the time, and that are my binoculars. Now, for many wildlife photographers, they might think, oh, I don't need a pair of binoculars, I can just look through a telephoto lens. But binoculars are such an essential if you're going out and doing wildlife photography. They allow you to scout locations out, find your subjects, and they just really help kind of reduce the fatigue in your eyes when you're staring off into the distance for your subjects for really long periods of time. They also have a much wider field of view than telephoto lenses, something that means that you can still be magnified but see a wider area to spot more of your subjects up ahead of you. You won't be restricted by your telephoto lens, giving you ideas about compositions as well as actually just tracking your subjects down in the first place. These are with me all the time, doesn't matter where I go. Um, you know, they're in the glove box in the car, they're with me even round my shoulder when I'm off to the pub. There's so many times when I'll be out not even doing wildlife photography, but use my binoculars to track down a subject. I might locate something and think to myself, oh great, I'll come back here in a couple of days and you know, with the camera in my hand, ready to make some pictures. They really are a joy. And of course, when you just love wildlife like I do, just having them with you every day to see and be close to wildlife subjects, watch birds through them, and just enjoy the landscape you're in, they are absolutely essential. And that's why I go nowhere without them. Right, so let's move on to the next key things. Uh, I think we'll start in the bag with the camera and lens. Now, the camera that I use is the Nikon Z9, and I know for a lot of people that would be an expensive purchase. But this is a flagship camera, and the reason I use it as a professional wildlife photographer is it just combines all of the best features that I need for my job. You know, it gives me a really great full frame sensor that has a high resolution, something that's very beneficial to me when I'm producing prints or selling work to clients, but it might not be something that everybody needs. You know, if you're just using it for yourself, everything like that, you might not have that absolute need for the super high resolution sensor. The extra benefit of that sensor is I can also crop in, something that's really useful if you're just a bit restricted in how close you can get to your subject, something that really is nice to have. In addition to that with the body, I also get the high frame rate, something that's really nice when you're working with wildlife. Being able to shoot 20 frames a second just means that I can make the most of any encounter with my subject, something that's super, super useful as you can get fleeting moments with wildlife, but still get a really nice um, collection of images to choose the best one. I also really do like the full body of a professional camera. You know, it's really ruggedly built, super durable. And when I'm out in the field working in all sorts of conditions, in rain, around sand, I want something that's really just gonna be a workhorse and not really blink at anything that the wild can throw at it. It also gives me big, big controls. You know, and when I'm working with gloves on, anything like that, that's really handy to have. I really love all the external features to access my menus, and it means that I can also set up my autofocus to have it on multiple buttons, so I can access different styles of focus really quickly in the film. Something that's great to have. I think if you're getting started in wildlife photography, um, you know, flagship cameras might be totally out of your price range, you might think. But actually, if you look at the used cameras, the used market, there are so many flagship models from a couple of years ago that have all of these features I'm talking about, but they're just not the absolute latest in sensor technology. They still were fantastic for people like myself and other pros for years and years, and they still go on producing incredible images, and you'll certainly be satisfied with them. You know, for under a thousand pounds, you can easily pick up a flagship body that's gonna do you superbly out in the field. In reality, with wildlife photography, lenses are where you should be spending your money, and it goes the same for all photography. Here I've got the new 400mm 4.5 from Nikon. Um, it's a fantastic lens, a prime lens that I really like to use. 
I always find that primes force me to be a bit more decisive in my choices when I'm out in the field. You also get that top quality optics and that just slightly better image quality that really is nice. The autofocus on this lens is super fast, great for tracking birds in flight, anything like that. And that wider aperture, the 4.5, means I can also use it in low light conditions and still get those fast shutter speeds that I really require uh, for wildlife photography. There are, of course, you know, all sorts of options in the telephoto range. Anything from a 200mm to an 800mm can be cracking for wildlife work. It's really going to depend on the style of shooting that you like to do. You know, I've got the 400mm here, but I also do use a 600, a 300 2.8. It really is kind of situational on what I'm choosing. Good lenses to get you started are something like a 200 to 500. Um, it's going to offer a really good range, flexibility for you to find out what sort of focal length you really enjoy working with before maybe you upgrade and invest in a prime later down the line. You know, these are an expensive investment, but the quality of the optics, the speed of the AF and that extra, um, you know, low light performance that you get from the wide aperture is certainly worth the money. And I wouldn't be without any of my telephoto primes that I use all the time. They've paid themselves off many, many times and a much better investment than camera bodies for sure. You know, one of the key things about having a long telephoto lens is giving you that reach to make sure that you can get frame filling images of your subjects without disturbing them too much. There will be some times when you can get close and use something like a 200 or a 300 mil, but of course there's the flip side of that when you really can't get your, near your subject and a 600, 800 is what you're gonna be wanting to reach for to make sure you're not disturbing them, not kind of causing any disruption to your subjects, but still allowing you to get those shots. So really it is going to come down to what you like to photograph, you know, are they small birds and stuff like that, then go for the 600. But if you like a mixture of things, you know, mammals as well as birds, then something like a 400 might be a better choice for your style of shooting. So what else is in the kit? Well, largely when I'm out on a shoot, I tend to just use one kind of body and lens combination when I'm out shooting you're not going to have that much time to switch lenses all the time when you're out shooting wildlife because the action's pretty quick. Most of the time I'm choosing the style of image I'm going after and then I'll just set myself up to get that shot in the day. Of course I do carry other gear as a wildlife photographer, stuff that is useful in different shoots. I always have a wide angle with me just in case I get that incredible encounter with um, a subject coming close, I can make use of this. I really love the 35mm, it gives me a practical natural look um, whilst not being too wide um, and also that 1.8 aperture is super nice uh, for when you know you want to get that low light performance. In here I do have my FTZ adapter, obviously I'm on the Z system now but I do have a lot of F mount lenses. I love the fact that this adapter means I can kind of backtrack to all my older gear, that means I don't have to upgrade it in one single go, that is really nice. Works great on my 300mm 2.8 that I use all the time, uh, especially for lower light work, um, you know, so that's an absolute essential to have in the bag. Other stuff that's in here, well, I've got a macro lens, um, depends what you use, um, you know, but a short telephoto, something like this, can work really well for more environmental shots. Um, but it's not something I always reach for. I tend to be more of a telephoto shooter. Now, you know, of course, if I'm going on an extended trip, I will have a significant amount of more gear with me, a 70 to 200, 24 to 70. There's loads of stuff that I do have access to. But if I'm going out for a single day, I really do like to have a concise amount of kit. It's gonna reduce the amount of weight that I'm carrying. Often I'm trekking a long distance, so I don't wanna have too much on my back. And it's just gonna mean that I really focus on using the tools that are with me to make the shots I'm after. You know, you really don't need too much day to day to get out and do some wildlife photography. I think that some people think it's quite restrictive to get into it, but seriously, there's not too much that you absolutely need. So probably right, let's move on to some of the accessories and why they can be really important for you. So the first big one is my tripod. Now this is such an essential for the photographer, especially the wildlife photographer using long lenses. There's a lot of time when I'm waiting around for long periods, um, you know, when I'm trying to stay with my camera, focus on a certain spot, waiting for a subject to appear somewhere, where hand holding and just sitting there waiting is just not going to be practical. A tripod therefore is a real essential to hold a heavier telephoto lens in position for a long period of time. Of course, you get the other benefits of using a tripod. 
They slow you down, make you think a bit more about your compositions and how you're working in the field, um, the way you're getting closer to subjects and positioning yourself. They also give you that additional stability for your work. You know, you can then experiment with different sorts of shutter speeds. You can drop your shutter speed and, you know, blur a little bit, add a little bit of motion into your frames. Something that certainly isn't possible when you're hand holding, it'll just look like a blurry mess if you're not using a tripod. You know, I just love mine. I take it with me everywhere I go. Um, this is a Jitsu 4 Series Systematic, super strong and rigid tripod, packs down really nice and small. One of my favorite things about the Systematic Series is the fact that they go completely flat. I work so much of my time on the ground, so having something that goes ground level is an absolute essential for a wildlife photographer. On the top, I've got my ball head. I don't always use a ball head, depends what long lens I'm bringing. You know, the 400mm um, is quite a small lens, so I don't really require a gimbal or anything like that. But I do have one of those when I'm working um, with a 600, 800mm lens. The ball head gives me a great amount of flexibility. It'll still support like 25 kilos, so there's no worries up to a 600. But what it does is it gives me the opportunity to work with a long telephoto lens or a wide angle or something like that in a, in a more practical way. And if I can only take like one tripod head on any assignment, I'm gonna take the ball head with me and it's gonna be attached to my Jitsu Systematic. I also do love um, twist locks rather than lever locks. A lot of people like lever locks, but to me, I just always find they go wrong. Twist locks, they're so much easier to use with gloves on, anything like that, if you're just trying to be quick. I love the fact that you can actually undo like all of these in one go and just pull it out super fast. That's great to use in the field. Also, this, can, um, this tripod is completely, um, you know, I can take it apart. That means that when it's got sand and grit and all sort of other rubbish that happens to me all the time, I can take it apart at home strip it down, clean it off in the bath and put it back together. And I know it's gonna work absolutely perfectly. Also the fact that it's lightweight, it comes with me wherever I go, um, even when I'm like internationally flying, anything like that, really great. Love that bit of kit. Have used it for years, it is an absolute essential. A couple of other quick accessories, rocket blower, batteries and cards, and also a lens cloth. You know, rocket blower is really handy for just a, cleaning the sensor, just getting anything like that off, but also blowing any debris away. You know, if I've been out on the beach and I've got sand on my lens, rather than rubbing it and actually ingressing it more into the camera, a blow is a really good way to just take it off. Another super useful thing for this is if it's raining. You know, it's raining, got wet on the end of the lens, you know, drips on it. Don't ever wipe them off, because all you'll do is smear the front of your lens up. If you take the blower and just blow down it like that, the water will just come right to the bottom of the lens and you can keep shooting. Wipe it off quickly with a tissue. You're not gonna smear the lens up and you're gonna be able to shoot much quicker. Save so much time cleaning your lenses. So that's always in the bag. Um, next up, you know, cards. Gotta have lots and lots of cards. Sometimes you can do, go out and maybe take five, 10 pictures, but on other days you can shoot thousands of shots if everything's working out. I use some pretty big cards. Um, I never really used to, but nowadays that I'm using twin 256 gig um, cards in the Z9, mainly because it shoots at such a high resolution um, that I don't get as many frames on a card as I used to. So it's nicer to have the big cards. Um, and I like to have them on both slots. I don't actually run it in backup because I want the immediate speed to just run across everything I do. I actually shoot usually video to one and stills to the other. It's just how I like my workflow to be. I immediately back up when I get home at the end of the day and I always have enough cards to never overwrite something when I'm out on a big shoot. Um, might seem overkill, but I probably have like 10, 15 of these, so they're really handy. Batteries, um, luckily the Z9 uses the really large professional batteries. These easily last a day of hard shooting. Um, the newer ones I can also charge by USB-C. That's super handy because it means that I can take one charger that works for my MacBook, my Z9, everything like that and charge everything. Again, less stuff to carry around, that's really great. I always have a couple of these spare, um, you know, just in case a day ends up being with thousands and thousands of images, you always want these. And one little tip, just make sure you have these in your pocket when you're shooting and not always deep in the camera bag. 
So many times you like hit the buffer, be like, oh my God, I need a card, run back to the camera bag, try and dig it out, subject's gone. If it's in a pocket in your coat, you can just whip it out, stick it in the camera, and you're ready to go. Um, really handy to do that. Final thing is a good lens cloth. Um, this is one from Lee Filters. Absolutely love these. They're really nice and big, um, but they work really well. Great soft feel to them. Don't get any smears, anything like that on your lens. And also, if you're in a pinch, you can also wrap stuff up in this and keep it protected. That's really nice. I always have a couple of these in the bag. I do also have a um, sensor cleaning set with me most of the time. Um, I would never use that out in the field. It's really for when I get back to a hotel or something like that, and I just want to clean the camera. Just great to have with me if I'm on any extended shoot and I get a little bit dust on the sensor that just won't come off with a rocket blower. That is in there as well. And that really kind of rounds out the stuff that's in the main case. Now, moving on from the kind of like obvious like camera gear, let's talk about clothing for a minute. Now, when it comes to wildlife photography, yes, there's all this expensive camera kit, but it's the clothing that's really gonna keep you out in the field for a long period of time. If you're cold and you're wet, you're just not gonna sit around and wait for your subjects to show up. The likelihood is you'll be freezing, you'll wanna go home, and you'll just go home with no pictures whatsoever. So I always start with a good base layer, often merino wool, something like that. It's gonna wick any sweat away, but leave me really nice and warm. And then insulating out gear, um, you know, this soft shell jacket is fantastic. It's also very quiet. Like, you know, it's a quiet jacket when I'm moving around, something that's really important when you're moving around with wildlife, you don't wanna to make too much noise. Um, and of course it keeps me warm. I can dump um, using the pit zips to make sure that when I've been hiking, I don't build up too much moisture inside because the moment you stop and wait, that starts to cool you down and you'll get cold and you don't want that happening at all. On my feet, always got good quality footwear. Um, these are my uh, muck boots, my wellies. They're super warm, insulating, keep my feet nice and dry. Obviously I can wade around in puddles, anything like that, really good. If I'm walking a lot further, I'll probably switch out to my hiking boots. Um, you know, having good quality ankle support is essential, especially when you're carrying a large load on your back. You don't wanna be putting too much like, you know, weight through your feet and not supporting. Um, because at the end of the day, if you don't get to your location comfort and safely, um, you won't be enjoying any wildlife photography at all. I usually have a hat and gloves with me, even in the summer. You know, I use thin gloves um, to protect me from midges and things like that. But also what they do is they cover up your hands. That if you're working with particularly skittish subjects, any like obvious signs like this is gonna spook them away. So it's nice to have them covered up. Of course, I do usually carry a couple of extra layers with me. I never go out just in what I've got and that's all. I will take an insulation jacket like this, something that packs down really nice and small. Super handy to have, you just rip it out. Um, this is a synthetic jacket. Um, I do have down options as well, but when it comes to the one that I pick up every day, the synthetic's really nice because if it gets wet, it will still keep me warm. That means that, you know, if I've got absolutely soaked out on location and miles from anywhere, I'll still be warm in this, whereas a down jacket doesn't hold the heat when it gets wet. So that's always with me. Um, super easy to just lob in the bag, really great to have. And of course, the rain shell. You've got to have some Gore-Tex to protect you from the weather. Um, you know, I really like the Gore-Tex Pro stuff. This is an Arcteryx jacket. I also have Rab ones. Um, you know, it's gonna stop the wind, um, cut the rain, and it's gonna be completely waterproof. When you're crawling around, be it on the beach, on the ground, you're gonna get wet and soaked, so you wanna keep that away as much as possible. Um, the Gore-Tex Pro stuff is a little bit thicker. That means that, you know, you're not gonna rip it as easily. And sometimes if I know I'm really gonna be crawling through some bad stuff, I'll actually put a smock or like a thick um, cotton smock over the top of this to give me some protection to my Gore-Tex whilst I'm crawling around. Um, but it really is dependent on situational. But one thing I will say is that when you are walking somewhere, make sure you layer off to walk and hike. And then when you get there, layer up again. You know, you don't want to get too hot walking because you'll find that the moment you stop to settle down for some photography, you'll immediately feel cold. Other things that are in the bag, that kind of a safety aspect, I really do like to carry um, a head torch, a small first aid kit, and a little survival bivy bag. Um, this might seem overkill in some ways if you're working in the UK or anything like that, but I just really like to have them. There's so many times when you might cut yourself, do something um, that you can just fix really quickly, you get a really bad blister, it's super annoying. It's really nice to have a little first aid kit with you. 
head torch essential. If you're going to locations starting really early in the morning, you know, it's pitch black when you leave, you need to be able to see where you're going. And of course, if you get caught out after dark and you've got to navigate back to the car or anything, a head torch is really something you want to have with you. The BV bag survival bag is something I just started carrying with me. If you get in a rough situation where you're super cold, wet, sometimes I'm up on mountains or working in more remote areas, it's really nice to have. But it's also great if you happen across someone else who's in a bit of a trouble. You know, when you're out in the landscape and you're in these more remote areas, there might be someone who needs you. Just having a small, tiny bivvy bag that takes up literally no space. You can wrap it around someone, keep them warm if they've had a fall or any kind of injury, and just make sure that they get home safe too. So I always like to have that with me. You know, just a little extra, and I hope I never have to use it, but it's in the bag for sure. One of the kind of final things that's there is of course my rain protection for my cameras. You know, if you're out in the sand, rain, water, whatever, you want to keep your gear nice and dry. Um, I always pull this over just to give it that extra protection. Of course, everything's weather sealed with the professional cameras, but it's always good to just have that simple barrier to stop. Also, my one's a camouflage color just to blend stuff in. If I'm working with stuff that easily gets spooked, it's nice to have. Um, but that really is kind of the basics of what I carry on any shoot. I think if you're getting started, you don't want to bog down in too much. You know, just get hold of a decent um, camera that's going to have, you know, great frames per second, low light ability or high resolution, depending on what you're more after. And then add to that a good telephoto that's going to help bring your subjects closer and you're ready to get out and shoot. You know, yes, you can look at all the best lenses and everything and you can spend a great amount of time doing it. But to really educate yourself on what you're going to need, you want to just going to spend time out in the field and then you'll really start to say, ah, that's the lens that I really want to have. And then you can get it down the line. You know, a lot of this gear I've invested in over years and years and years. I didn't start with a Z9 and a 400 mil prime. I started with a Nikon D40 and a 70 to 300, a camera that I used to create loads and loads of images before I started to step up. The knowledge that I got from using that was essential to using the cameras I have today. And so don't be disheartened if you know you don't have all the gear to start with. Just slowly add to your kit and you'll really get there. I suppose the final thing is a good camera rucksack, just because you know if you're going a long way into the field, it's nice to be able to carry things comfortably. Make sure it's got a good hip belt to carry the weight here. You don't want it dragging on your shoulders all day and with space for extra stuff that isn't just camera gear. You know, I pointed out some of my like safety gear and things like that, but you know, water and you know, some lunch is also something you're definitely going to want to have because if you're hungry and you're cold, you're definitely not gonna wait out for the wildlife. Right, so to just kind of round things up with the essentials, camera body, telephoto lens, that's got good autofocus, a nice sensor, and enough reach to get you closer to your subjects tripod to help you kind of like keep everything stable and supportive when you're waiting on location for a long period of time good clothing that's going to keep you warm dry and comfortable for a long period of time and then of course a good backpack so you can get everything to your location and back without you know really feeling it with those sort of gear kind of sorted out you'll have everything you need to get started in wildlife photography Everything else can be added over time. Um, and just once you've thought about things that you might like to add, you can pick them up as you go. You don't need everything to start. Hopefully that should give you the basics of what you're gonna need um, for getting out and doing some winter wildlife photography. And I hope you'll join me in the next episode where we'll be heading out on location to start making some shots.